Uh, just wanted to give you the quick update. Sorry we missed one last week. It was just a busy week. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, hopefully this week will be a quick review for uh, last Wednesday night, but I wanted to make sure that we touch base. This past Wednesday night, we finished up our parable study, and we finished up with a bang, uh, to put it mildly. We finished up by looking at Matthew chapter 25, which gives us three specific parables that all kind of have the same purpose. And that same purpose is to tell us, Jesus wanted to tell his disciples, and then also tell us that the master will return. Uh, you've got three parables. The, the first one is the, the parable of the ten virgins where the bridegroom returns and there were five virgins that were foolish and five virgins that were smart or wise. And it says that nobody knows when he'll come back and you need to be ready for when he comes back. Uh, and so again, that's that whole theme right there of being ready, being prepared. The second one was the parable of the talents. We know this one. I think the majority of us are familiar with it. Our students are familiar with it. But the idea of the, the master's going away on a journey, he entrusts his servants with uh, certain talents. One he gives five, one he gives three, and one he gives one. Uh, the five takes five and invests five and gets five more second one gets three invest three three more and then the one goes and hides his in the ground uh when the master returns he calls them into account Uh, again remember the master entrusts his servants what a cool thing he trusts his servants he expects them to do something with what he gives to them uh the first two he's very pleased with the last one he is not pleased with because he squandered the opportunity that he had uh, and so there's a judgment for that. And then finally, there's the last one. I said it, there were two, three-ish parables on this because the last one's what we call the separation of the sheep and the goats. Uh, it's also the, the least of these passage, if you will. Uh, at least that's the way my brain works and the way I remember it. Uh, of course, that's where the, 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 the king separates the sheep from the goats. And then he says, uh, blessed are you who have... Who, or chosen or righteous, uh, blessed are you, enter into your the master's happiness. And he goes on to say, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was naked and you gave me clothes. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was in prison and you visited me. And they go, wait, when were you in these situations? And then the master looks at them and says, even as you've done it to the least of these, it's as though you have done it unto me. Uh, what a cool reminder for all of us, again, that there will be a day of, of, of making sure and a, and, a, and a day of judgment, but that also uh, that, that, that when the master does return, that he will set things right. And so uh, I had three points to give to our students last week, and I would encourage you to talk to your students about these. The first one is this, to be ready. Knowing there will be a day that Jesus returns, we need to be ready for that. We don't want to be caught off guard. We don't want to be caught unprepared. We ourselves need to know that we have trusted Christ. But with that, we also need to make sure that those around us know Jesus too. I challenged our students to make sure that our hearts are in the right place and that we know Jesus, but that we're also very diligent to share it with our friends and share it with people that we see. Maybe not even our friend friends, but people that we just know that they would come to know Jesus too. Because the reality is there will be a day when Christ returns. It might be five minutes from now. It might be five years from now. It might be 500 years from now. It might be 5,000 years from now. We don't know, but what we do know is that he is coming back. So the first point we made last week was be ready. We ourselves want to be ready, but we also want to make sure other people are ready too. The second point we made was to live with purpose. We think about the parable of the talents. The master entrusted his servants with certain gifts, certain talents, amounts of money, those things. Everything that we have is ultimately a stewardship. We've been entrusted with it from God. The talents and abilities that we have, the money that we have, the jobs that we have, the people that we have in our life, all of those things are things that God has entrusted to us. It's important that we use those things wisely. Use them in a good way. Use them in a way that is for the glory of God and for the kingdom of God, that we would invest in other people, that we would make a difference in the world around us, and that we would use those things to bring glory and honor, not to ourselves, but to the master who entrusted us with all the talents and abilities that we have. The last thing that we shared was to make sure that we show mercy. I love this this passage. When we get to that, even as you have done to the least of these, it's as though you've done it unto me. What a great reminder to you and to me, to all of us, that we 
need to not judge people. That's for God. He's the one who's going to judge people. But we need to use the talents and the opportunities that we have to visit people, to care for people, to pray for people, to speak truth to people, to meet people's needs. You know, a lot of times we don't get a chance to verbalize the word of God because people can't hear us because of the immediate need that they're facing. Maybe they're hungry or they're thirsty or they're going through a difficult time. We need to come alongside people and love them where they're at. Not approve of what they're doing, but love them where they are and point them towards Christ. It's not for us to judge them. God will convict them when he gets a hold of their heart. But what are we called to do to love them? We're called to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our strength. And the second thing that we're called to do is to love our neighbor as our self. You know, the reality is we ourselves are called to be ready. We're called to, um, to live with purpose. And we're definitely called to show mercy. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to talk to your students about that too. Hey, last and certainly not least, we're getting ready to start our small group study. We're working on our final details about that. Looks like we're going to be looking at 1 Peter. And it's going to be on Sunday evenings. We'll have some more information in the billboard and in other places coming up. It should start in the next couple of weeks. But uh, it'll be a great time and a great opportunity. Parents, if you're interested in helping with that in any way, shape, or form, whether that be um, helping to host or have it at your house or help lead a group, please talk to me about that. I've got a few folks that are going to help out with that too, and we're excited about that, but we can always make room for more. And so we would love for you to be a part of that as well. Anyway, listen, hope you have a great day. We look forward. Hope this all made sense. If you have questions, please contact me. We hope you'll see you soon.